All right, welcome back everyone. Thanks for joining me again. And uh, if you're watching or catch up in the future, thank you for tuning in. I want to start by acknowledging that I'm broadcasting from the traditional lands of the Jajawarang people and pay my respects to their elders past, present and emerging and any First Nations people who are here tonight or watching on catch up. And I wanted to, I'll start with a quote again tonight, or a little passage, and then we'll go into some meditation, and then we'll have some time at the end for questions. So, and feel free to unmute any time if you want to ask a question as well. So I'm reading from this one tonight, it's a bit bright, but, um, which I've been using for the last few weeks. And this quote is about objects and space. So it goes like this. Our minds are always drawn to objects. The mind is primarily interested in sound and activity. You can test this by looking around right now. Notice what your eyes are drawn to and what your mind pays attention to. It's probably things. The pictures on the wall, the trees, the people, the buildings, the clouds, or maybe the fingerprints on the wall if you have kids as I do. Your mind is drawn to all those things. I say your mind because even though the eyes take the image and the brain processes it, it is the mind that is focusing on particular things. Now look around again and notice that the most prevalent thing is probably empty space. What the mind doesn't notice, especially in a closed or crowded space, is that the volume of objects is very low compared with the volume of space. We usually see only the objects and not the space. All right. So I wanted to read that tonight because it relates not only to the world around us, but also to our inner world. Because, you know, we've talked about you know, numerous weeks we've talked about how busy people's minds seem and how much is going on internally, how many thoughts are there. And what I want to do tonight in our practice is to draw your attention to the spaces. And we'll start by looking at in, inner internal spaces. That's key. And we'll also talk a bit about how we can sink into and enjoy the space that has opened up in a lot of our lives this year as well. So you find yourself a comfortable position and either close your eyes or find somewhere to look where you won't get distracted. And we'll start by just taking attention from the thought stream and placing it on the breath instead. So just noticing what it feels like to breathe in and what it feels like to breathe out. So notice the sensation as the air enters your body. Really feel that. Notice the sensation or the sensations as it leaves again. And then as we breathe together, just take a moment to notice the space that's there in between breaths. So we have a really clearly defined in-breath, a clearly defined out-breath. And then after the out breath, you watch closely, you'll notice that there's a little pause before the next in breath. Something that we usually don't notice. So as we sit and notice the breath, just allow your attention to rest in that space, in that Pause. 
Allow your attention to rest in that stillness. Because what we have is activity in the form of the in-breath, activity in the form of the out-breath. And then we have this empty space in between. What we notice in that moment of pause is the space that's inside you always. We notice the breath coming into that space. We notice the breath going out of that space. And then in that gap, in that pause, You notice the space itself. Just allow your attention to drift in that space. And then when the next in breath comes, just allow that to be overtaken by the awareness of breath. As we continue to watch and continue to practice, we may notice that even as the in-breath comes, the space is there. And we might notice that even as the outbreath is going, the space is there. And this is why each week we're talking about how we're not creating something or getting better at something here, except maybe getting better at noticing. What we notice when we sit together is something that's already always here. So as we breathe and we watch, let's take a moment to notice what thoughts are arising right now. Thoughts are disappearing. Again, not to be caught by them or lost in them, just watching that process of arising and disappearing. And as each thought dissolves, which they all do in time, as each thought dissolves, just keep paying attention to the space that's there between thoughts. There's this open, empty space. And if we, if we watch, we'll see that thought really arises out of that space. The same way that waves arise out of the ocean. And we'll see that the space is there before the thought. The space is there 
during the thought, it's the container in which the thought is arising. And then after the thought dissolves, that inner space is there too. And if the thought stream is activated and busy, there might not be a huge gap. There might not seem to be any gap between thoughts. We'll see if there's some gap. And then a brief moment. And again, in our practice, as always, we're not trying to create gaps. We're not trying to, we've got no interest in having a particular experience. If there are no gaps, we just notice that there are no gaps. If there are longer pauses, longer moments of stillness and silence, we just notice that. Again, we don't get attached to that. One is not better than the other. Everything is equal. And you might find it useful if the thoughts are getting a hold of you to just pay attention to the breath and use that as an anchor. Just keep attention focused here and now. And of course, thoughts will derail us. They'll pull our attention in. And we've been lost in thought. All of us have been lost in thought for decades. So when we sit and do this, those habits remain. And that's okay. We're learning to notice those habits, to notice where attention goes. In a sense, that's our only, the only power that we have in this practice is to notice where attention is going because we don't control thoughts. We don't control feelings. We don't control anything else that happens. And we don't control where attention goes either. So what we're learning is to watch where our attention goes and maybe to be a bit more deliberate with that. So as you breathe and you notice, watch those thoughts coming and going. You can see thoughts arise. Try to pull you in and see the thoughts dissolve and then just allow attention to rest in the space between thoughts. As we do that, we might also notice that the space itself is something that we're observing, that we're noticing. We're noticing thoughts, noticing breath. We're noticing the space in which thought and breath come and go. And behind all that, We are there, you are there, awareness is there watching. So 
to those thoughts and those sensations drift across this spacious inner sky like clouds. And we can watch that, we can notice that play. And we can also notice that they're not the clouds or the sky. They're the awareness that takes in all of that. And we can we could start to bring attention to that just by asking the question, who or what is watching this? Who is here noticing what comes and goes? And I recommend not answering that question, but just allowing it to sit, just allowing it to be there. We feel the breath. We get curious about thoughts and we watch them as they come and as they go. We notice this space and always we can sense ourselves as that background awareness, as the watcher, the observer. Whenever you get lost in a thought, just gently bring your attention back, the breath, to watching. To noticing the space. And to noticing yourself as the observer of all that. And we're moving beyond here, beyond understanding things through thoughts and through concepts and descriptions. So we're not trying to explain in words in our heads what's being described here or what we're noticing. We're simply engaged in the process of Noticing it, watching as everything unfolds. Conceptual <clears throat> understanding or thinking about things is not the solution to the problem of suffering is the cause. And so we're moving into a way of being 
that we feel and we notice and we observe. What we're used to doing is to analyze, to judge, to evaluate. we move to is just noticing everything exactly as it is. Allowing it to be as it is and just bringing attention to it. And if thought keeps coming in and grabbing your attention, just don't concern yourself with it. It's quite all right. Just come back to noticing, back to breathing, <clears throat> back to feeling. And just observing these silent, still spaces that are here with us always.
Now, of course, the voice in our heads is persuasive. It's addictive. It's really good at grabbing our attention and holding it. So you will get lost. And that's okay. You can notice what it feels like to be lost. Notice the angst that's there just as you come back. Notice the the angst that's there when past and future, which is the main concern of thought, when past and future come to visit and we pay them attention, what that feels like in the body. And we can notice in contrast what it's like to sit here now with nothing to do, nowhere to be, indeed no future in existence, let alone in need of being taken care of. And as we notice that all suffering comes from thinking about something that's not happening. And how freedom comes when we step into the reality that there is no time There is no past or future to take care of, only this. And if this instant was all that you had to take care of, ever, how much lighter would your burden be? Can you manage what life is presenting you right now? And I don't mean right now as in the present situation in the world or what's happening tomorrow, anything beyond sitting here, breathing, listening, noticing. Just to take care of that is enough. But notice how the voice in your head screams of the importance of past and future something other than this. Notice how convincing it is. And then if you can, just smile. Let those thoughts do their thing. Feel the breath. Watch breath and thought come and go and notice the spaces in between and in the same way we can start to notice the spaces in our lives times when we have to wait Times when there's nothing to be done. Times when all there is is to sit and to be. 
and to connect with this moment in the best way that you can. I think humanity is doing that more so now than we have probably in a long time, sitting quietly with not much to do. And we can sit and wait and anticipate and maybe worry. We can sit and enjoy. And either way, things will happen as they do. Life will unfold as it does. But one option and bring us peace and maybe even enjoyment in amongst all of this. And one option brings boredom and frustration and worry. And that's okay too. We can just notice that as well. So in a moment, I'm going to invite you to just sit comfortably and open your eyes. Before we do that, I want you to know that this is a practice that you can do at any time. As simple as noticing the breath, noticing the space in between breaths just for two or three breaths at a time. When we bring those small spaces, those small meditations into our lives, we can really start to integrate this practice into the process of being human. So I want to invite you to Open your eyes if you've had them closed. Bring your attention back to the room, to the group. Feel free to stretch if you need, if that feels right. It always feels right to me. Top up your tea. And I'm just going to shift as well. All right, so thank you, everyone. Sorry, dog. Um, Thank you, everyone, for joining me in that. It was really lovely to just sit and just breathe and just notice and just step back into that space. Um, I wanted to open it up for questions, comments, 
noticings. Um, feel free if anyone would like to, to just unmute yourself and ask away or if you'd like to share any observation. I found actually, Ollie, I mean, I enjoyed that and um, I've got used to it a bit because of the other classes I've joined before. I've got used to this form of meditation. What I found was as the time went on, it got more and more difficult to stop thinking it's as if thoughts kept coming into that space. I mm. had to make quite an effort to to let them go. So they were there all the time under trying to undermine that kind of um, silence that you were mm. trying to achieve, I think. Yeah. Yeah, and that's good to notice. I mean, what we're really wanting is to go beyond even trying to have silence, if that makes sense. So just wanting to notice the silence and the spaces that are naturally occurring and stepping out of the process of really trying to create anything extra or anything new. So in that sense, if your mind's really busy or there's a lot of thought coming and going, that's that's what's happening. That's totally fine. And um, you know, I left a little bit more space in the meditation tonight, a few more, a few longer gaps. And I know that you know, for the feedback mm-hmm. I get is that having those reminders helps pe- bring people up back out of thinking. Um, so I think it's probably to be expected, but but yeah, I think what it, you know, whatever arises in your practice is fine. We just want to notice it, and again, when we notice that we've got lost in thought, just keep coming back and keep coming back. That makes sense, Richard. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks for sharing. Yeah, it makes sense to keep. Um to keep coming back onto the breath and onto the space so that you don't let the thoughts take you along a a kind of journey or like a dream almost because it's most of it's about something that happened yesterday and such like yeah 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 people talk about the train of thought don't they and it's like it is like a train you know you 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 hop on somewhere and then you wake up and you're somewhere completely different um but yeah i think that's a really good way to describe it of you know trying not to get carried away with the thoughts the thoughts themselves are okay and we're practicing you know sitting and breathing and and staying alert and aware in amongst them oh yeah is that you jen yes <laughs> sorry recognize that yawn <laughs> yeah. No, um I feel much more settled at the end, even though I started with lots of thoughts and thoughts come along the way. But at some part it was complete silence. So if it only lasts for a few seconds, I'm I'm happy for that to have happened because that just shows it can happen. And the yeah. breathing to begin with is hard because I'm noticing it more and that makes it harder. Mm. And I think, oh, I just breathe too much. I breathe too quick. But then um, that's settled as well. So it's busy, breathing's harder. And then after a while, the gaps are good. I like the gaps. I, I sort of, yeah, that's been helpful too. Um, but, yeah, just to come back and realise, oh, that did happen. I did get some real quietness in there even if it was only for a few moments. So, and there's a shift from the beginning at the end, which there often is when I do the practice. So, yeah. Mm. Yeah. Lovely. Thank you. (laughs) Does anyone else like to share or ask any questions? 
Yeah. Um, just trying to put the words <coughs> together. Um, I think the first thing that comes to my mind is that meditation practice is obviously called practice because it doesn't come naturally. Um, to me anyway. Okay. Um, so there's a great theory that I have. I understand a lot of the theory, but applying it needs a lot of practice. The other thing is that, do you think that there is um, an, a natural state within us that is quietness? Yeah. Um, yeah. And that we've acquired this constant chatter through the way um, lives have evolved and society has evolved or do you think that the constant chatter is a natural state and we need to, to say tame it but then I think of your words of um, um, allowing it to be yeah. does any of that make sense to you perfect it sense in a, yeah oh, perfect sense really good question um, because it does seem doesn't it that the chatter is the natural state because that's what we're used to. And if we left, mm. if we didn't do anything, didn't do any sort of practice or, or, or learning, that's what we, that's what we'd experience. That's what we do experience most of us. Um, but if we look at, I think a good way to judge what's our natural state is if we think of natural as what naturally feels right to us you know what feels good is you know when you think of your body in a state of health or a state of what's natural it's when your body's functioning and it's you know it's feeling good and I think it's the if we apply the same test here we can see that actually the, the what's unnatural or what we've learned is the you know, thinking too much, thinking about past, thinking about future and getting lost in that process. Mm -hmm. And the other thing that you raised <clears throat> is that, you know, is there a, a natural state of, of peace and stillness? And there is, you know, and you can, if you really look and you keep, keep practicing, you'll start to notice that that space and that stillness is there even when thought is arising. That actually, you know, thoughts are rising in that silent space. It's like mm. the background of it. And that when breath comes or body sensations, we notice them arising in that inner space. And it's the space is hard to notice because it's like looking for the air around you. It's not, you know, it doesn't have a color. It doesn't have a shape. It doesn't have a, a form. But if you even, you know, watch, if you even look at an emotion inside yourself or a physical sensation and find the border of that sensation, find the edge of it and notice what's just outside that edge. You know, what's just on the other side of the boundary. How do we even know that that sensation has a a, defined, a clear boundary? Because it's there, you know, it's surrounded by this space that has no, where there's no sensation and there's no kind of, you know, nothing arising, if that makes sense. And so, yeah, not only is that sense, that space and that stillness natural, but it's always there even when, mind is busy and, and emotions are rising. But when I um, used to hear people saying that, I, I couldn't understand it. I couldn't find it. But if you keep looking and you just, you know, just keep sitting and noticing, you know, I remember one day just clicking that, oh, okay, the space is kind of, it's almost invisible because it's just, it's emptiness. But you can you kind of sense it when you really look inside yourself, and and things start to slow down enough that you can kind of see clearly. So it's yeah, it's not something I can adequately put into words, but if you keep looking inside and doing these practices, 
you will start to sense this spaciousness in which everything's arising. And when you find that, then what arises in the space becomes less important. And the kind of spaciousness itself becomes a lot more interesting. So that sounds pretty profound to me. <laughs> yeah, and don't try to understand that with in words. It's just like keep looking is the short answer. <laughs> Det- we're all detectives here. Mm, detectives okay. and explorers. Thanks, Brenda. It was lovely. Um, Karen, did you have something you look like you wanted to ask something before? It just, yeah, you're unmuted. So. Um, in some practices, um, they encourage you only to count. Um, and like, I, um, I sort of resist doing that because then I, it becomes kind of like another thing that you're paying attention to is uh, the counting. And, um, yeah, just mm. Mm. any thoughts on that? Yeah, well, <clears throat> I think when I started learning meditation, I shopped around pretty hard in the spiritual <laughs> marketplace as it was. <laughs> this was in 2003, so there, there weren't as many product options back then, probably, as easily accessible. Um, it was, you know, people remember back in the days where you couldn't get on the internet and have the, have a phone call at the same time. Um, so yeah, I tried lots of different meditations and some of the ones with, um, you know, counting and people sometimes ask me about, you know, visualizations and things like that. And I, I don't kind of knock any practice. Um, but for me, I like the simplest mm. possible practice I can have, which mm. to me is just sitting and noticing mm. what's here now. Mm. And I did find the counting thing, um, I'd get a bit distracted by that. And then, especially when I was beginning, because I could only probably count to one before I got distracted, um, then it was I found it a bit disheartening and I'd get a, bit, a little bit frustrated with it. Um, yeah, so I think I think the you know the purpose of those those practices is probably just to try to hone your concentration and, and get a little bit better at and having a bit of a point of focus mm. to help um, help kind of concentrate the attention in one spot. Um, but yeah, I think it's it's whatever works for people is fine. Mm. Yeah, but I get where you're coming from. Is it? Uh, yeah, I'd count to one or two and then mm. be getting annoyed because I, I thought I should get to at least seven or eight or something. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think you can kind of get, your mind can get caught up in the counting rather than the noticing. Mm. That's what. Yeah, yeah. What was, that? What was mm. I up to? Was it three or was it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, very true. Thanks, Karen. Anyone else want to ask a question? Hello, Linz. Nice to see you again. Hello. Nice to see you too. Uh, I'm I'm good, thank you. It's a a much more convenient time, although I only saw it at last minute, so I was (laughs) rushing around to join. But um, I'd like to say thanks because uh, I find that, yeah, over the last few months I've had more time um, to practice and it's definitely practice on a regular basis that I think helps to strengthen and calm the mind so you know um, it feel a lot more calmer and happier generally um, yeah mm. so thank you Ollie no thank um, you Linz nice to meet you guys oh, yeah. Hi. Yeah. yeah lovely to see you again Linz came 
to one a few couple of months back when I was doing them a different time, and I think it was about it was about three in the morning mm-hmm. at your place, Linz, or something. Yeah, I was just uh, about to go to sleep, and I thought, nope, I can't really miss an opportunity to, <laughs> to join this Zoom session with uh, Ollie because uh, I do uh, rate your teachings a lot, so I was very excited. But it was three o'clock in the morning, and I was. Um, should I, shouldn't I do this? But I was, I was <laughs> glad, glad to have done it, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was very impressed. So, yeah, what's well, 10.30, this one, is it? Or it's a little bit nicer? Yes. Yeah, 10.30 yeah. in the very UK. Cool. <laughs> very good. Well, yeah, thanks. It's really nice to see you. Thank you. All righty. Are there any last questions? So um, people can ask them as well in, in the Facebook group or shoot me an email or find me on some form of internet. Um, do you want to ask something, Kim? Not, not really to ask anything, but just to say yeah. thank you. Again, I'm in the UK, so 10.30 in the morning is good for me. So <laughs> yeah. I, I've read your book years ago and it's nice to actually sort of meet you and see you and meet like-minded yeah. people. Thank you. Thank you, Kim. Yeah, lovely to have you along. And, um, yeah, we'll be same time next week as well for everyone. So mm. um, stick to Mondays, well, for the foreseeable future, whatever that is. Um, yeah, so thank you. Thank you, Kim. And thanks, everyone. And thanks, everyone who's watching on Catch Up. I'm going to end the recording there. Okay. Thanks, everyone.